Hello, I'm Lorraine Sellers and I'm the Programme Lead of Improving Care Experiences Programme at Celsius. And I'm Gordon Main, I'm a consultant with Celsius within Improving Care Experiences. Okay, we were asked by the SUE Planning Group um, for this set of activities to think about how we would bring children, young people and the people that look after them's voices into the events. Um, so um, we wanted to spend a bit of time thinking about the importance of that mm -hmm. um, and how we might do that in a way that reflected um, a supportive and helpful um, um, we really didn't we? That's right um, and we, we, we initially wondered about doing that separately for children and young people and then a, you know, a separate section on carers mm -hmm. or, or parents and what we found quite clearly is that all of the evidence just fits nicely together and, mm -hmm. and we wanted to, to present mm -hmm. it in that way. Yeah, yeah because um, the messages kept kept a very uh, tight theme, didn't they? About their experiences and their expectations being very similar. So, so what were the messages that came out most strongly? Yeah, we we ended up with three different themes mm -hmm. uh, from from our initial search of various different sources. Uh, they were around behaviour as communication, stigma, and the importance of relationships, and relationships not just for children and young people with adults, but also the relationships between those adults um, and those that, that care for others. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be helpful to think about stigma as almost like a golden thread, unfortunately, that went through a whole range mm -hmm. of um, the, the activity, um, and that's one that we haven't addressed specifically in the presentation, but we saw it appear, whether it be how people saw children in care, um, in residential settings or insecure, particularly right through how kinship carers are viewed and treated in quite a complicated system. So we decided that we we would allow that to appear through the presentation um, and, and the behaviourist communication one was one that kept reappearing and reappearing across the piece um, in terms of um, children being able to say quite clearly about what they did and, and um, what went on for them when they behaved in certain ways and that that wasn't always um, a straight reflection of what was going on for them, that it was much more complex than that. Um, they were also able to say really clearly what it meant if it wasn't responded to helpfully and in a um, supportive and meaningful way for them. Um, carers um, across the piece, both foster carers and kinship carers, strongly saying we need help and support to think about behaviour and what it means and that it's much more complex than children who've got ordinary everyday experiences have been looked after um, and we saw that described in various ways. We also um, heard through um, talking about relationships how some of that was addressed in terms of behaviour um, and we also heard some of the things that were helpful, for example, kinship carers being able to say um, that um, groups were helpful for them, um, good advice was helpful for them, that that made a difference um, for them and being able to do it in a much better way. Um, th it was important to say that they were noting that things are different now than when they had their own children, for example, and how they needed to know more about that in order to be able to parent well. Mm -hmm. um, and when that behaviour was was interpreted in a way that was um, that wasn't helpful for mm -hmm. young people, they, it brought us back to the stigma. They often mm -hmm. felt marginalised. They mm -hmm. often felt that decisions were made about them, which actually led to further loss for mm -hmm. them. So, so children and young people had some um, a, a lot more knowledge on that than, than mm -hmm. we had probably you know, set about. Yeah. We, we discovered a lot more about what children and young mm -hmm. people could tell us um, mm -hmm. the, and, and that was in a number of different settings. Mm -hmm. so, so for example in secure care there were some really important messages mm -hmm. for children and young people from um, secure care able to look back on where things might have been noticed earlier. And, and and really quite, they felt that was so important that, that actually their behaviour could have been identified mm -hmm. as communication mm -hmm. at an earlier stage, mm -hmm. which would have led to, to less loss and perhaps mm -hmm. the ability to live in their own communities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and other studies actually showed us that that, that, that goes you know, right into uh, the views of children and young people uh, who are incarcerated mm -hmm. and, and the further loss that that, mm -hmm. that leads to for yeah. them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that, that took us, I think, into the, the importance of relationships. Yeah. And we couldn't separate out the two, mm -hmm. um, and, and why, why should we? But the relationships as, as, as such an important um, uh, way of, of managing 
mm -hmm. people's behaviour, of interpreting that behaviour, um, of, of supporting people through, mm -hmm. through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. um, and your people talked sometimes negatively but often very positively about the, the people that cared for them. Um, and wider type of relationships mm -hmm. as well, um, mm -hmm. not just about people who cared for them, but also about siblings. Um, there, there wasn't a massive amount of information about siblings, mm -hmm. but but enough for us to think. Actually, that's another thread that we would we would like to explore yeah. um, in the views of children and young yeah, people. Yeah, it was interesting to us that we didn't see it appear in, in the written material quite as much as we expected, but the recent um, discussion in the care review. Um, leading us to places where we were able to see some of that um, mm -hmm. in quite clear descriptions by children about the importance of their sibling relationships and the loss they experience if they don't um, continue to exist for them. Mm -hmm. So um, again, that would be something we'd probably want to think about in even more detail in future. We really don't want this to be seen as, um, as children, young people and, and their carers have been very negative about relationships. They, they, they also see that as, as mm -hmm. a solution yeah. uh, and they see that that has worked for them. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes at a later stage, so for example, young people in secure care were really able to reflect back on, on how important the relationships were mm -hmm. with people, in, the, the carers in secure mm -hmm. care now, yeah. and that they really got them mm -hmm. and they spent time looking below what they described as symptoms mm -hmm. of their behaviour and actually what had occurred to and what had happened to them in, in the past um, mm. and they saw those relationships and, and the future relationships with some of those carers as, as vitally important as, as they move into yeah. more independent living. Um, yeah. We also had um, um, a really good input from, from someone in the audience mm -hmm. um, who, who was able to, to refer to a, a young man they were working with uh, who, who was continuing to live within a residential care placement and, um, and and was able to talk about the love that he experienced from his carers and, and how critically important that was. Yeah, we use a really helpful video in the afternoon part of the presentation called Unrelenting and it's a young woman's description of the people who managed to stay and stick with her throughout a really challenging time in her life. Um, and she's able to articulate really strongly mm. that she knows that she presented as difficult and she understands how hard it must have been for them. But she's really clear that the, because they did that, it made a really huge impact in their life. And she offers a, such a strong mm -hmm. uh, sense mm -hmm. of uh, wisdom almost about that worked really well, but also clearly says that she didn't understand that at the time but now he's able to look back and say that really made a difference. Yeah, and uses words like boundaries and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing in a really interesting way, I think. So that that mm -hmm. um, that video had a huge impact on us and uh, 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 it'll be an, in is an interesting thing for the, the, the group to see. Mm -hmm. There was a strong theme about um, carers having an understanding of the behaviour. Um, mm -hmm. and being able to learn about that behaviour and what it meant. And there's a really nice quote from a carer about saying, I just thought he was a bad wee boy. Um, mm -hmm. And that, her, that that carer being able to develop a sense of what that was about is the thing that let them be in and around that and hang on to that wee boy. Mm -hmm. um, so that idea that that um, carer's been able to develop insight and understanding, let them hang around and, and stick around. Um, there was some um, some suggestions and talk about the importance of behaving like a team um, and carers saying mm. we want to be part of the team, we want to connect up with the mm. other people around this child, that was foster carers, so that they can get supported in the best possible way and that being something that they thought was really important for them. That's right. um, mm -hmm. So. Some carers, in particular kinship mm -hmm. carers, were, were quite clear about um, how they, they didn't currently have that understanding, mm -hmm. how it was new information, mm -hmm. um, new advice, new skills for mm -hmm. them, um, which perhaps they hadn't think, thought about when, for example, when they brought up their own children, yeah. um, and that, that they needed support to do yeah. that. And, and, um, would welcome support to yeah, do that. Yeah. We used one example of running away as well and that, that um, the, the, there could be different reasons why a child or young person might run away and we, we had a wee quiz in the presentation about that and we used that almost as a tiny example of about how even as carers knew and learn about one child it doesn't necessarily mean that it's wholly applicable across to another child because there were three very different examples mm -hmm. of why um, a, a young person might run away for example. Mm -hmm. um, so that sense as well that 
that's a development understanding all the time for children and young people. One young person ran away because they were frightened, one young person ran away because they wanted to avoid police checks, and one young person ran away because he'd been labelled and actually was living a wee bit up to that expectation mm. of being a naughty mm. boy. So that whole thing about parents and carers and kinship carers, residential workers, being able to adapt and change for each individual child has been something. Children and young people were very clear about it was about them and the way they were responded to individually being really important mm -hmm. in that relationship.